Shut up, compressor. Hey everyone, I'm Matt with Duke's Models, and this is the flank off. I like that one. That'll work. <laughs> Here we've got the Kitty Hawk nose gear bay, which curiously joins in the middle and has, of course, the bulkheads front and rear. When we flip it over, there's a problem with joining it in the middle. Yeesh. I'll get in there with some sandpaper at some point and kind of calm that seam down a little bit. And other than that, I'm just going to, I guess, have to live with the fact that it's way up in there and probably not going to be seen all that much. Then we've got a few little doodads installed here. There's actually supposed to be another piece that went, you can see the little rectangle there, and it poofed off to the to the floor somewhere, and I just, I can't be bothered. All right, now that the nose gear bay is installed, there like that, it's time to work on the main gear bays. So what have we got here? Well, as you can see on the instructions, we've got three walls, so the inner walls and these front and back walls, basically, that do the usual uh, tongue and groove join, and they've got these guide tabs here to help them slot into place. Now, one thing that I find a bit frustrating with the way that Kitty Hawk's instructions operate, they did this on the SU-17 as well, is the part that you're supposed to use is this one up here and then they've got opposite seats you know it's just from a reading perspective it's kind of annoying you know you look at this you immediately think oh c7 that should be that but it's really nope c8 c7 is the other one i think it has to do honestly with the arrows or the lines coming from the opposite part numbers and then there's also the fact that sometimes they get these wrong, sometimes they get the entire sprue wrong, and it's not C, it's E, or something like that. So, minor annoyance, maybe a copy editor and a designer to help out with these next time would be recommended. Oh, you fuckers. See, this is why I have trust issues with Kitty Hawk. This is why I have trust issues with Kitty Hawk. So we have C8, C67, and C5, right? Now, C7, I think, looks okay in terms of how it lines up here. It's kind of got that same shape. Sits decently over here. And you've got C67, the inner wall. And they sit happily like that. Then we've got C5. Come on, guys. So I guess we'll be using C6, which makes me question the other ones, too. You know, we joke about basic modeling skills. But what about basic proofreading skills and basic design skills and basic quality control? Those would also be nice qualities to have. Ah, eh, shut up, compressor. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take these and I'm just gonna dab a little bit of, to me, extra thin in here, just to get a hold. Like so. then once we have this kind of tacked in place we can place it down onto the fuselage part make sure everything is aligned and happy for the most part it seems to be oh, there's a little little bit of flash doing some bullshit over here, so let's cut that shit out. <sighs> yeah. 
Yeah, phone, I hear you. All right, now we're gonna come in here with a little bit of more glue and just get all this shit put where it needs to go. Once this is in kind of a happy place, we can start double checking the overall fit of the upper and lower fuselages on top of these gear bays. I'll bring in the fuselage to make sure that this all lines up. Because you can see we've got some big chunky connectors up here too. If these things don't all pass muster with each other, this is going to suck ass. So we're definitely going to need, as you can see in here, a uh, intervention from good Monsieur Tamiya Extra Thin, because this stuff really wants to bounce up, but everything in there does seem to lock into place. So yay, test fitting for the win. Okay, so we've got the Kitty Hawk gear bays installed. Now let's see how Great Wall does. So with the Great Wall kit, we're gonna skip for the moment the upper cockpit stuff. So the, the piping for the canopy heaters and the HUD and all that fun business. And we're also gonna skip the radar, at least at the moment. I haven't decided if I wanna play with that or not. We're gonna get right into the gear bays. So this arrangement looks generally similar to what is going on with the Kitty Hawk kit where you have the two halves, except instead of having the two end caps, you only have one. The other one is already molded in. As you can see, we've got a couple of pieces. So these I-1 and I-43 that act as essentially wiring lines. C-17 matches up with another part that was on the Kitty Hawk kit and C-81 is a bulkhead. So let's get those removed and see how they go together. Okay, so we've cleaned up all the parts and they're ready to be put together. We're gonna start over here with I1 and A5. This guy has these little posts on the back side. Please don't go pinging off into the nether world. We're going to grab them from the other side. It'll be easier to place. Whoever designed the SU-35 can uh, fuck off for their gently curving nose gear bay. Both of these kits, it is a challenge, we shall say, to... Uh, looks like we've got a little bit of flash on the bottom of this, and the tolerances are so tight that I'm going to go ahead and shave that down just a tiny bit. Thin, just a little tiny dab right in there. Now that that's kind of locked in, all right, happy piece. Now we've got A4 and I-43. See, this looks like it goes up here on the top. A nice easy way to add some of the complicated wiring. And now all that we have is this little canister here, which I assume is, I don't know, something. Probably has to do with brakes or hacking American elections or something like that. But it's got a very defined way that it fits in here, like so.
that is that. Now, I'm assuming this is going to have the same fun issues with the uh, seam down the middle that the Kitty Hawk has, and that honestly has me wondering if maybe that's not a bug, but more of a feature. Maybe it's something that the SU-35 itself exhibits. Shut up, compressor. I'm pontificating. So I will have to uh, dig into some reference photos, because I've got a few that show the, the gear bays. You know, not the cockpit deck, but hey, we've got the gear base, and see if this is actually a thing that's going on. Not that it's all that big a deal, because right up the middle of the gear bay, the nose gear bay, no less, is not going to be somewhere where you're going to get a lot of uh, visibility. Let's go ahead and lock this bad boy in place. Who doesn't love a bulkhead? And see, unlike the Kitty Hawk kits that have uno tongue and groove on either side this one has two and they they're more like you know corner pieces so what that does is that helps ensure placement across the entire face not just in the middle and that way you can make sure everything is nice and happy so with the main gear base great wall definitely takes a different approach from how kitty hawk goes at these things so with the Kitty Hawk, it is a matter of the roof, if you will, of the main gear base is in the upper fuselage, and then you build up three walls attached to these little, or not attached, but helped locate by these little trim tabs on the inside, and then they sandwich together. So that works, but you have to worry about getting these aligned along with everything else when you're fitting the fuselage halves. So not a... Terrible design, but a design. With these, you have the full piece that is obviously just gonna drop into the lower fuselage, and then when you're joining it to the upper fuselage, you don't have to worry about um, how these fit, unless, of course, there's interference from this part with the upper fuselage, which I highly doubt. So let me get these pieces removed, and then we will start throwing these together and see how well they go. Okay, so just to help me keep all this shit straight, I'm gonna be building this on top of the instructions because as you can see, there are a lot of little pieces of wiring and whatnot that go in here and they go in very specific ways. And so I wanna make sure that I capture that properly. You know, after the just criminally under detailed gear base into me as F14, I kind of want to send this their way so they can maybe think about what they'll do next time around. All right, so next we've got this fucker. Shouldn't be all that big of a deal because it's got some big old holes that it can sit in. goes in here I think that's how it goes looks about right and this guy comes in here There is that. Now we've got C13 and I30. Look at that. If you look in here really closely, you can see these pipes match perfectly up with these pipes. That's pretty fucking awesome. Go ahead and hit this with a tiny little dollop of glue. And of course, then it comes unmoored on me. Sweet. All right, let's see how this fits into the lower fuselage, which if you look, instead of having a couple little corner tabs, this thing has essentially an all-around box trim 
it gives you a nice place to seat the gear base. Now when you flip it over, check that out. Very, very nice. Alright, so I'm going to build up the second one of these guys and we're just going to keep on trucking. So the nose bays on these things are pretty close to each other. Where we get a lot of difference is these main gear bays. Now, you know, here's the Great Wall. It's got a lot of nice detail, which it wins that game hands down. You know, take a look at the shape and everything. Now, let's compare it to the Kitty Hawk. Holy shit. I mean, they're not the same shape for one. For two, this thing is easily twice as deep as what Great Wall has going on. I mean, it's, it's not even a comparison. Now, which one of these is right? It's <sighs> really tough to tell. So I'm gonna pull up a picture I've got on the phone showing what these gear bays actually look like. So here we go. Now, in my opinion, that looks deeper than what Great Wall has going on, but it does not look as deep as these things that Kitty Hawk has going on. I mean, maybe, but it's tough to tell without the intakes and everything else in place. Maybe out towards the outside it looks like it might be, but towards the inside, I mean, that's a cavern. So, in terms of accuracy, which is not my forte, um, it looks to me like, honestly, these two, it's the same thing with the cockpit sills, where it seems like they are splitting the difference between them, and they're kind of both wrong from the looks of things. In terms of detail and in terms of fit, it's not even a question. Um, you know, the Kitty Hawk goes together decently. It exhibits what I would call some maybe dated engineering thinking, with you know, especially with the whole roof mounts, ceiling for the gear bays and whatnot, and the four tongue and groove, you know, slot things together, fit them into those little tabs. The Great Wall Kit makes that look sad. Um, the way it goes together is pure finesse. It is the kind of kit that engages with you and is set up in such a way that you can do a lot of things without necessarily getting into a trap you can't get out of. So you can test fit very easily. You know, we installed these, you don't have to. You can get them sort of framed up in that inside square and then pull them back out to paint. I'm just gonna paint them in here and deal with it because it's not that hard to paint gear base. And yeah, so as with the cockpit, as with everything else so far, it seems to be a draw slash not enough, not enough to condemn one way or the other in terms of accuracy on these two kits. So. With that, we're going to press on.